Okay, so in this video, we're gonna go over what I believe is the best way to build a modal or pop-up system for your website. You'll notice right away, there's nothing particularly beautiful about this so far. Uh, the code will be available to download in the description from GitHub, so you'll be able to implement your own design, styles, colors, fonts, things like that. But this is probably what I believe to be the fewest amount of lines of code to achieve a very straightforward implementation. Although please don't quote me on that. You'll notice right away that you'll be able to use multiple modals on the same page. You can see, for example, I've got a profile modal and a login modal that are both triggerable by different buttons. If you ever built a real world website before, you'll know that multiple modals on the same page is inevitable. It's gonna happen. So we need our system to be able to implement that from scratch. So I'm gonna go over to VS Code, which is my ID of choice. And right now I've just got a blank directory. We're gonna need three files for this to work. We're gonna need index.html, which will host the markup. We're gonna need modal.css, which will host our styles. And finally, we'll need modal.js, which is gonna host the jQuery code for this. A lot of you guys in the comments have asked that I continue to use jQuery for these videos. So that's what we're gonna do in this video, rather than maybe a vanilla JavaScript approach or using a library or framework. Um, so now that we've got this done, we're gonna go back and I can type HTML and use Emmet, which will generate a HTML skeleton for me. But if you don't have that, you can just type it out. And you'll notice as well, when I press save, I have a plugin for VS Code that'll just format this more nicely as well. Uh, so don't be alarmed if yours doesn't do this. And then the first thing we're gonna need to do actually is, is include our styled file, I guess. Um, this is in CSS and you'll see I've got autocomplete that'll say modal.css and then underneath in the bottom of our body tag we're going to include scripts and we're going to need jQuery which I can just copy across from a different project and also we need to include a script that will lead us to js slash modal.js again I've got autocomplete which is really handy so now these two files are both linked to our index.html file and if we refresh the page here we'll just see a very blank page because we've done absolutely nothing yet as far as implementing this. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need three divs. So we're going to need a div with the a class of modal. This is going to be the outermost element, the actual anything inside our modal is going to be contained within this div tag. And then we're going to need inner modal and the use of this will become apparent later. It helps with scrolling and things like that when the next div that we're going to use, which is called mo uh, modal content. If the content exceeds the bounds or exceeds the height of the page in uh, the inner, inner modal, will basically facilitate this. It will hide the scroll and allow us to um, basically make it more responsive. But like I say, this will become more apparent later. And then inside modal content, this is gonna be sort of the white part uh, of the initial demonstration I gave, that anything that is you would classify as content for your modal. I'm gonna just type profile here, and then I'm gonna create a paragraph tag underneath and just generate some lore and ipsum just to go inside that uh, for the sake of demonstration. If you go back and refresh, all of that's appeared on the page, but obviously we haven't built it inside of our modal yet. And now we're gonna to need to include some initial styles. So in any project, we're gonna to need to get rid of the defaults um, that CSS will provide to elements for you. So we'll get rid of the margin and padding by default on every element so that we can add our own list style set to none and then text decoration uh, set to none as well. And we should notice that if we refresh the page, everything gets rid of all of the default margins and gives us more control over what we're gonna do next. Okay, so now we can get the modal class from here. And we're gonna to need to apply some default styles, basically. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is paste that in and we're gonna say width, 100% of the viewport width, which will make it the full width of our device. Height, 100% viewport height, which will do the same, but for height and not width. And the background color, we're gonna to set to RGBA, which gives us control of the alpha channel, which is sort of the opacity uh, of, the, of the colors. And I'm gonna say 16, 16, 16 for RGB, and then about 0 0.8 for the alpha channel, which is basically gonna give us a black screen, but tone down the opacity slightly on the background so we can see the content behind it. Give us that really nice look that modals have. We're gonna set the position to fixed, um, which will obviously make it so that if the user has scrolled down the page and clicks a modal, we don't have to cut them back to the top of the page. It will just appear over the top of whatever we're looking at. We'll set the top, top to zero because we always want it to be stuck to the top of the page. Z index, we're gonna have to set to a pretty high number just so that it comes above any content that might be in the background. And for example, titles and stuff in the background won't overlap the modal. And then by default, we're gonna include display none and opacity zero, because obviously we don't want the modals to be displayed by default, but for now we can just comment these out and we'll bring them back in later. So now if we go back and look here, what we can see, let's add that to my bookmarks uh, by accident, we can see, like I say, the transparent background there and the, the text and stuff over the top, which is exactly what we want um, for now. 
And the next thing we're gonna do is on the inner modal. So type in our inner modal class here. And what we're gonna do is effectively build the innermost part of our modal or the second innermost part, should I say. We're gonna set um, the uh, max height on this to be 100% of the viewport height. And all this is gonna do, like I say, is facilitate if any content exceeds the height of the, of the viewport. It's gonna basically give us a really nice scroll uh, rather than obviously chopping it off at the bottom, which we of course don't want. We're gonna set the box, adding, box sizing to border box, uh, padding to uh, 50 pixels, Actually, no, we don't need this yet. We can put that on the content. Box sizing for the box display, block. Obviously, we want it to be a block level element. Overflow Y, auto, and we're gonna hide the scroll in a minute, but keep the functionality, which will be really nice. Set the height to 100%. Um, the width to 100% as well. And this is so it becomes clickable and we can detect that in our jQuery code and use that to, as a trigger to close the modal. And then finally, we're gonna set padding zero 20 pixels and this is going to put a uh, padding on the left and right of 20 pixels so like down here and here and when we make it responsive um basically it's going to keep the content 20 pixels away from either side of the screen which again will make more sense later okay so now again we shouldn't really be able to see much different we've got that padding in at the sides um, but now we're going to do the content and this is where we're going to start to see things come to life a little bit so do modal and then um i think it's modal content that's right we're going to set the width by default to 600 pixels. You can set this to whatever you want. And by now, I'm just going to give it a height of 300 pixels, but we will remove this later. This is purely for demonstrative purposes. We set the maxed width to 100% of the page, uh, of the modal, sorry, of the inner modal, which is going to be 20 pixels away from either end of the screen, which will be really nice when we scale. Um, and for modal content, we're going to set the background color to white. And then display to block block level element again and margin is going to be five viewport height on the top and bottom and auto so if i save this and we take a look now you can see it's contained all of our stuff really nicely inside this modal and if we go back to our modal we can give it a padding of 50 pixels the two d's and what that's going to do is push all of the content 50 pixels away from the left and right of the screen so now i can get rid of the height that we set for demonstrative purposes and now this modal will adapt to any content that we put inside uh, of the modal so you can see here if i remove the paragraph tag and save it's just got rid of that and the modal stays really nicely and responsive with the with the content that's inside it okay so now what we can do is uh, I'll add some like really superficial stylings just to make this look a little bit better. Like for example, I'll add font family Arial just to make this look nicer. And then on the H1 tag, which is our heading tag, I'm gonna say padding bottom 20 pixels just to push it a little bit further away from the content below it. We can obviously play with the line height, but you can do that in your actual implementation when you start to build this. So what we'll do now is we'll add back the things we deleted before, which is here, just that we use to hide the modal. So by default now we've got a blank page. There's no evidence that there's a modal or how it is in the background um, waiting to be triggered. And now outside of our modal, I'm gonna create a button. Uh, and our implementation of this is very nice. So I think what we're gonna do is give it a parameter, a property of open modal and set that equal to true. And what this is gonna be is we're gonna listen on in the JavaScript code for any element that has this property set to true. And then we're gonna know that this, when it's triggered, when it's clicked, okay, this user now wants to open a modal. But to know which modal that this button triggers, we're gonna set a modal ID that we'll use in the back end, And we'll call this one profile. And then we'll say profile, or maybe open profile. I'll probably just put that button really up here, really ugly. So what we'll do for now is go back and I'll add some more code at the bottom just for demonstrative purposes, which will say maybe, let's say, display block margin 50 pixels, auto font size 40 pixels, padding 10 pixels. All right, so now we get the open profile button nice and centered like you saw in the demo. And obviously when we click it a million times, it's not gonna do anything just yet until we create some functions in, the, in our JavaScript code. So the first function we're gonna make is called uh, close modal. Uh, and this is obviously what we're gonna to use to close the modal. And the reason we're doing this as a function is so that we can make it um, triggerable by different elements. Uh, we don't wanna write all of the code inside uh, the event itself, because then if we wanna make something else close the modal, we'll have to copy and paste that code. So by making it like this, we're going back to that modular approach I talked about earlier. And then a pro the property, the parameter that's gonna take is called modal, and this is gonna be the actual element that we wanna use as our modal. And then we can very simply just say modal dot remove class active. And what we need to do now is actually make that class. 
So if I go back here and I say dot modal dot active, this is going to basically be applied to anything, any modal element that also has the class of active. And you'll see here there's no space between these, so that we're not nesting any elements. Uh, and we're going to set this to display block, which means obviously it'll be visible, and then opacity one. Felt like correctly, not opacity. And um, yeah, so now again, we won't really see any difference just yet. But we'll use this in our open modal function that we're about to build. So I'll copy and paste this down. We'll create a open modal. And then we'll set remove class to add class active. And then when this function is triggered on the modal, it's going to add the class of active, which will show the modal to the user. And the, re and the way we're doing this is very nice because it actually gives us that multiple modal approach that we talked about before. Uh, and then the final piece of JavaScript we're going to need to include is basically how do we catch these events? So what, what's the user going to click to open the modal, for example? And in our case, it's anything with this open modal true parameter. So what we're going to do is set um, any any parameter basically with open modal equals true uh, on click. We're going to run a function. And then for, at first, I'll just write alert hello. And you'll see that anytime I press this button, we should get hello. And that's good. That, that shows that it's working. And um, we can delete this. And now we need to catch some things. So I'm going to say modal equals um, this. At get the attribute of modal ID. And then if we just alert this um, really quickly, oops, we'll see that we get profile. And that is being picked up from here. We've set the modal ID to profile. We can change this to whatever we want, but this is going to link to the modal. So now we need to give the modal itself the ID of profile. You see now how these two have got the same, effectively got the same ID. This means it's going to find any modal with the profile ID that matches and we'll open it. So we're about to do that now. So rather than alerting uh, the modal name, which is useless and annoying, we're going to say open modal and we're going to get, um, we're going to use back ticks here and say dot modal. So anything with the modal class that also has the ID of our modal, and we can put our um, inject our variable name in there as well. So now if I save that and go back and click, you can see our modal opens, which is great. We have to refresh the page, however, to close it, uh, which is really tedious and annoying. So for now, we can fix that by saying dot modal click function, and then we're gonna pass in the event as a parameter because we're gonna need to access some information about the event that just transposed. And we're going to say var click target, set it equal to e dot target. And what that's going to do is give us lots of information about what it is exactly the user's just clicked. So like I said before, modal is our outermost element. But when someone clicks the black background of the modal, we want to actually close it. Um, so what we can do here is um, say if click target dot attribute class, we're looking for the class of whatever's clicked, equals inner modal which it will only when we click the inner modal then we're going to close the modal and it's going to be click target dot closest modal um again so what that's going to do is we're going to run the close modal property on uh, whatever the closest modal element is to what's being clicked so that's going to be when we click on the inner mo inner modal div it's going to find the modal that's outside of that and then close it basically remove the class if we use up here so now if we refresh we click open we click the background it will close because it's detected that we've clicked the negative space and the reason that we do this is because we don't actually want it to close if we click inside the white space of the modal obviously we might have buttons here the user might interact with the form that appears here so we don't want to click here and then the modal will close only close when we click the background and uh, the great thing about this being so modular is that you can get this um class and use that to trigger when you click a little x in the corner for example that like you can add yourself you can you can close it in a number of different ways open it in a number of different ways because we built it in such a, a nice way if you ask me although i might be a little bit biased but i'm sure you'll all tell me in the comments what you think uh, and now basically that is the entire implementation we've pretty much done it uh, and now what i'll do to prove to you that you can use multiple modals is i'll copy and paste the entire modal sort of tree I'll change this to login, for example. I'll change the title to login. And you might want to show a login form here. You also might want to put these inside includes if you're using PHP or another language that will support including code. Um, and then all I've got to do is create a new button called uh, login. And then I'll change open profile to open login. 
Uh, and then what will happen now is you'll see I've got two buttons. I click this, the login modal will open. I click this, the profile modal will open. So obviously this is a very, very straightforward approach, but it works great. And now that I'm gonna put this code on GitHub, you can download it, play around with it. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments. If you've got any improvements that can be made, let me know, make a pull request perhaps, and we'll merge them. Uh, and we want this to be sort of a community-based video where we can get the best possible modals and pop-ups for, for people to use on their websites. That's effectively what we're going for here. So uh, obviously like the video, if this was helpful, download the code in the description, leave a comment if you've got a better approach or if this was useful to you. And I'll, I'll be making more videos on this channel again soon. So I hope to see you back here on the channel again for the next one.